Jess Moskluk uh, came along in an inter interesting time as a cover singer on YouTube, which of course to her audience and demographic was absolutely normal. I think she ran into Mike, a guy who was a traditional record guy who, you know, wasn't, I'm not sure, you know, I, I won't suggest that he didn't know what YouTube was, but he may not have. <laughs> so uh, he took a very traditional path with this young uh, artist who was born on YouTube. And I think that it worked very well. I think there's a hard transition when you go from being a YouTube artist singing all the best songs in the world, cover songs, to now having to record your own music. So she had to find things that would convince her audience that her voice on these new songs was just as impactful as it was singing the greatest hits of the day. Cheap Wine and Cigarettes. I love that song. And I didn't even realize it was on MDM at first, because it was like, I love this song, where is it? I gotta find it. And then I went, holy shit, it's Mikey's. <laughs> when Cheap Wine and Cigarettes was happening, that caught us, I think, all by, by surprise. Certainly I did, because I didn't think that was, I thought that was a good song, but I didn't think that was the song that it became. The best day, the day that kind of really I felt we, we had arrived was when Jess won her first Female Artist of the Year at the CCMAs. We had a great song. We had an amazing artist, but we were an independent label up against the major labels. That win was, it was epic. I still get goosebumps when I think about that win. Jess Moscow. The last however many years for me has been a series of firsts. Every year there's been a new first, a new gold record. Uh, even if it's a new festival that I've always wanted to play, it's been constant and I love it. But that makes it really hard to plan and it makes it really hard to look back. You constantly have to follow up your last release. Somewhere along the line, you have to stop doing this. And you might do this or you might do this, but you can't continue to go this way forever. And I know that. So the, the pressure is trying to go this way as long as you can. It's the coolest feeling in the world to watch your artist go out on a really important time slot at a festival, which is usually Saturday night, getting into the evening hours and, and just watching people go absolutely crazy. And my brain just goes back to the very first time I ever saw the artist. Some of the achievements that the label has had, you know, Chad Brownlee's I Hate You For It, I think, sold 50,000 copies. That was a big deal. Obviously, Cheap Wine and Cigarettes, that became like a chart-busting song, a career-making song for Jess, especially at a time when uh, women aren't being played on the radio and stuff like that in the country format. Well, a gold and platinum song for a Canadian female artist that hasn't been done since Shania Twain. It's amazing when you think about it. I, on an indie label with a small-town girl out of Saskatchewan. As long as I got you and you got me Let's get carried away Let's get lost, lost, lost Montreal or L.A. Love will be where we are When the label wins, everybody wins. Mm. And so there has always been this philosophy at MDM, and this has come from the top down, where, you know, let's help each other, let's support each other. When you know that an artist has something that is different than anybody else, like the artists we have right now, you just find a way to keep going. You just find a way to change it a little bit and change the story and reinvent it and give you legs that can last a career, not just a year. I remember my first ever meeting with Mike Denny was at a hotel bar in Winnipeg when they were in town for the Junos. And the first conversation we had was Mike's like, you know, I like your song, I like your voice. You're kind of an intense dude, but uh, I'm willing to give this a shot. But just so you know, it's a, it's a three to five year plan. We just met we for. It's a huge indication of why Mike has won Canadian country music record label person of the year. Winning record company of the year at the CCMAs, I know was super personal because we all feel so invested in this label like a family. So I think that for all of us, I don't know if it elevated the label or not, um, 
but I know that it elevated all of us to feel a certain way to push ourselves to work even harder. Mike was part of that recasting of the Canadian country business that wasn't necessarily about just getting to Nashville. I think these, with artists like Dean Brody and, and, and Chad and Jess, you, you, there's an ecosystem that's been created that says it's okay to be in Canada. Him being really smart about um, the business side of things and the fact that he never went for, oh, I got to open a big office and have a big desk and 47 staff and all of that. He runs it from his home. He's, you know, he's solid. I think what's really nice about Mike, too, is that, uh, you know, you go to a, a bigger label, and I've been on bigger labels, you know, and, uh, you know, you don't talk to the, the owner of the company. You don't talk to the, you know, the head guy or whatever, you know, you got to go through... 20 different people if you even get there, you know. And, I mean, I can call Mike up any day and, you know, so can the, all the other artists, you know, and, uh, and it's like you're getting that, you know, one-on-one -on -one personal treatment, you know. We found a model that works that allows us to take our time and really set these artists up to have careers, not a hit single. Mike was crazy about the song Take Me Home, and he was absolutely right. I think we all felt that one a little bit. We all knew that it was something special. Top Spun song the year that it was out. I still have the work tape of that song when, when Jess sent it to me, and I was like, this is going to be a huge song. Clearly the success was found both in terms of multiple CCMA nomination and wins and a Juno uh, award as well. So those are pretty, pretty cool things for Jess. Jess and all of her sort of um, accolades that she has received over the last four years, um, her winning the Juno, huge moment, huge, huge moment for MDM, huge moment for that female artist. I mean, it was incredible. Everybody celebrated that. That was a moment none of us saw coming. It, that was, it was awesome. It was everything about that was real. Um, and to be amongst peers of all genres and in a room of very accepting people who, who kind of went, just what, just who? How do you say that? That was a cool moment for all of us. I love that.